Snow Tracks is sponsored by Polaris, Think Outside, ski Snowmobiles, Yamaha, revs your heart, and by iPhone Lubricants, exclusively distributed by Parts Canada. I don't have as much time as I'd like for this story, so I'm gonna skip my typical deep thoughts intro and just jump right in by saying, if you're a Skidoo rider, and even if you're not, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this. Skidoo's 2024 lineup is impressive and has something new for everyone. But before I get into the actual new stuff, I need to explain a change to the trail sled naming structure. Package names such as Blizzard X, XRS, etc., will remain, so let's get that out of the way. What's changing is this, from now on, all Renegades are four strokes, period. Well, there is one exception and that's the Enduro, but other than that, there is no such thing as a two stroke Renegade. All Renegades are four strokes and they all have 137 inch skids. On the flip side, MXZ models are all two strokes, no exceptions. You can get them in a 129 or a 137, but not with a four stroke power plant. If you think about it, this does simplify things. It might take some getting used to, but it's not hard to understand in my opinion. The only notable mechanical difference though between the two is that four strokes all get the rearward steering post and all two strokes get the forward steering post location. Now with the new naming structure comes a new look for the four stroke Renegade lineup. Will come as no surprise to anyone that from 2024, four stroke models are all in the Gen 5 bodywork. Visual differences are limited to a wider set of panels and some extra cooling vents in the hood. Unlike previous wide body four stroke skidoos though, this new Gen 5 four stroke bodywork doesn't feel extra wide when you ride it. Ergonomics for aggressive riding stay very comfortable. Next up, we're gonna go over some changes to the backcountry lineup, and obviously they are all Gen 5s now, which is what everyone expected. But there's also a new C-Motion X skid frame out back and all backcountry models get the rack style steering setup previously only found on XRS trail sleds. The C-Motion X features a longer and higher mounted front arm to provide better on-trail ride and handling characteristics without sacrificing off-trail capabilities. Up front is still the same adjustable 38 to 40 inch wide setup as last year. Now this next sled is what's really gonna get you high performance guys amped. Yes, they did do it. For 2024, Skidoo is releasing an 850 two-stroke turbo. It's offered in only one configuration, no options. It's an XRS with a competition package, so it's got the KYB Pro 40 shock package with three position compression adjusters, all the extra skid frame and tunnel stiffening bits, as well as all the extra parts the competition package includes, and it comes with a 10 inch display. Skidoo is not holding back. They are claiming 180 horsepower, but they're also taking things one step further. If you're wondering what that little tank behind the seat actually is, well, to keep air intake temps cool for extended full throttle runs without the added weight and complexity of an intercooler, they've developed a water methanol injection system. The proprietary mixture will be sold by XPS and is stored in that little tank behind the seat. The mixture is injected into the intake and is burned off during combustion. Now, under normal riding conditions, you really won't use much at all. It's only under long full throttle pulls that anything will actually be used up. It is a pretty cool solution to the problem of rising intake temps on turbo sleds. This sled, as well as a number of others in Skidoo's lineup, also gets a new Brembo four piston brake setup with an adjustable lever and, and this is actually a big one, it's the only trail sled in Skidoo's lineup that comes with shot starting. Skidoo claims that the 850 Turbo XRS with shot weighs the same as the naturally aspirated 850 XRS with electric start. So no weight penalty but you still get all that turbo power. Final sled I wanna talk about is one that nobody saw coming or heard coming for that matter. For 2024, Skidoo is releasing the Grand Touring E-Power electric snowmobile. Now this has to be understood very clearly. This unit is not available to the general public. It is only for tour operators. It has been designed specifically to meet their unique needs in terms of speed and range. So I really don't want to read any comments on YouTube about how it's not going to work for you on the trail. It just isn't meant to. Power is delivered through a clutchless electric drivetrain that runs through a chain case to the drive axle. The battery is mounted up front. Every aspect of this sled was looked at to help optimize range. A new Pilot SLP low friction ski and a new low friction track were developed specifically for this application. Suspension comes from a standard RAS up front, 
The rear is an interesting combination of an optimized SC5 skid frame wrapped in a 120 inch by 14 inch wide by 0.75 lug track. The sled comes with two different keys. The first one is called the guest key, and this one is limited to 40 kilometers an hour. The second key is called the guide key, and the speed for this one is limited at 60 kilometers an hour. The range in total is about 30 miles or 45 kilometers. After riding it, my impression was that this is a fantastic idea and is gonna work perfectly for the intended riding scenarios. It's got buttery smooth, entirely unintimidating power. It rides and handles well, and it's incredibly quiet. These are all things tour operators asked for and Skidoo delivered on every one of them. So that's what's new from Skidoo's 2024 trail lineup. Now it is pretty clear that the crew in Valcor is doing everything they can to keep the competition as far back as possible in their rear view mirror. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Hercules Tire. Ride at our strength. When it comes to 2024 for Yamaha, there's really not a whole lot of big changes. It's more so just a refining of what they already have. New coloration across the board and some cool throwback colors, especially of note is the Sidewinder SRX LE EPS with a nebula gold and black coloration that I think might be the best looking sled Yamaha has ever built. Now, if you move over to the Sidewinder LTX LE EPS in Team Yamaha Blue, you're gonna get some pretty high-end shocks. While not pictured here, the LTX LE will have Kashima coated Fox 1.5 and 2.0 Zero QS3s all the way around the sled. This is a very premium suspension package for the aggressive trail rider. The XTX LE IQS also comes in the same Team Yamaha Blue and features IQS suspension as well as the 146 inch uncoupled rear skid. With a 1.6 inch Cobra track and all kinds of features from the heated seat to the included ice scratchers and a 20 inch tunnel bag, the XTX is a fully loaded crossover rocket. The 137 inch LTX GT EPS gets a refined color with ink blue and frost silver and also features some cool stuff up front, like dual rate front ski springs and ski shims with a four bolt carbide designed to improve handling. This Sidewinder is packaged with standard features that'll keep you comfy all day long. The Viper will also make a return in 2024 with one LTX GT package, as well as many other notable Yamaha sleds, including the two strokes both on trail and in the mountains. The Vibrant Sidewinder LTX SE returns in an ice blue and red line package, as does the XTX SE. The Mountain Maxes will return with the 800cc two-stroke in 154 and 165 inch versions, all in team blue coloration. Also available is the 800LE 154SL standing for super light, with a shorter seat and gas tank, a 3-inch lug and the shorter heat exchanger. The SX Venom Mountain and Standard Venom all feature ice blue and red line graphics for 24. The Snow Scoot 200 is back in two colors and a 120 SRX will also be available. The Transporter lineup will feature three sleds for 2024, a one seat light, a two up light, and the full 800cc Transporter as well to round out 2024 for Yamaha. Now, when it comes to 2024 for Polaris, it sees some really unique parts in the mountain category specifically, but when it comes to the entire company, they have a new focus that I think all buyers will truly appreciate. And that focus is to get products to you, the consumer, in a more efficient way, sooner. Polaris recognizes that you want your sled sooner, and they're focusing very precisely on doing just that, simplifying production processes and getting sleds built out of the factory and to your local dealership so you can be on the snow sooner with your brand new 2024 sled. And to back this up, Polaris is providing a delivery guarantee that your snow check sled will leave from Roseau, Minnesota by no later than November 30th guaranteed or you get a $1,500 rebate. When it comes to new technology, the biggest news from Polaris for 2024 is the track options on the RMK. The all new Series 9 325 is a 3.25 inch lug track and it's the biggest in the industry. Designed for those who ride consistently in the deepest snow, this is a deep snow only track and will deliver the same life as previous tracks as long as you stay under 50 miles per hour and use your scratchers whenever on trail. This track is the same weight as the previous three inch lug track and gives unmatched forward drive, spool up and lift. This new track is not backwards compatible with previous arm case sleds. The 325 is available in 155 and 165 inch versions. Now something else that might seem small, but is a really nice feature that's included on all RMK models for 2024 is an ice scratcher that you can go in reverse with. 
Like I said, this will be included on all 2024 RMKs, and when used, will keep RMK engine temps on average at 100 degrees on trail conditions when getting yourself up to the steep and deep. These are backwards compatible back to 2011. Now, when it comes to boost models on the trail, you can still only get this in one model, snow check only, and it comes in a VR1 137. The XCR returns in 128 and 136 inch versions, but no boost here. In crossovers, the Switchback Assault is the only way with a long track flatland sled to get boost and is snow check only. Interesting to note here is the snow check only premium paint packages in some really cool and unique colors with incredible up to three layer paint processes with metallics and candy colors that are just incredibly vibrant and unique with a teal and purple that's just completely off the chain. Something extra to note is the old 800cc engine is now completely gone from Polaris, and in the Titan, the new S4 four-stroke will take its place, and the 800cc Liberty era has come to an end for Polaris. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. I've always said that the thing I like most about snowmobiling is that it's a family sport. I get to do it with my family, my immediate family, my extended family, we're all involved. And if there's one thing I like most about the Neo in particular as a snowmobile, it's that it appeals to the entire family. And some people think that the Neo is just meant for uh, beginner riders or new riders, but we've proven over this winter, my family has, that the Neo is actually great for everybody and today, I want to take a look at all the different types of riders that the Neo appeals to and find out why they like it and why it's become their favorite sled. I've been riding snowmobiles for almost 10 years now. My first snowmobile was a little green one. I liked that I had freedom to ride on it. This year I finally turned 12 so I can get um, my snowmobile license so I can ride with my dad and I'm really excited about that. I love going on long rides with my husband. Um, we've been riding snowmobiles for over 20 years. It's been challenging over the years with some of the sleds that I've had to pick from. The types of snowmobiles that my dad ride, um, I wouldn't fit on them and they're just too big and powerful. Um, when I first saw the Neo, I thought it would be a really good size for me. Um, and I was excited to try it. After I'd actually ridden on it, it felt like really good. I liked how it was like just right for me and how fast it went. Well, I think one of the problems and the risks that BRP took when they brought this sled out was it's just built for people who want to go slow or just built for kids. The truth of the matter is, is I've ridden this sled a fair little bit, and I am shocked at how capable it is at keeping up with, with bigger, more powerful snowmobiles under certain conditions. It's not gonna go down the lake at 100 miles an hour, but it will go down the lake at 60 miles an hour. The power of the Neo felt really good. It felt like just right, and yeah, I liked how smooth it was. When I first saw the Neo, I immediately loved the size. Um, I feel like I fit on the Neo, and I don't feel like a little person on a big sled. Riding a big snowmobile is um, a little bit intimidating. The sleds are too big, and I just don't feel as in control as I would like. I think the Neo is just about perfect for younger riders and smaller physical stature riders because it still gives the sensation of a snowmobile, still has all the fun and, and the capability of a snowmobile, but it just fits people really well, especially younger riders, uh, children who are of legal age to ride. It fits them just right. And maybe the most important thing is the power is not intimidating. I feel really safe um, following my dad on the Neo because it doesn't have too much power and I can handle it perfectly. I felt very in control when I was driving the Neo. I felt like the Neo had um, just enough power so I could keep up to Luke. I would recommend the Neo um, for small riders um, who are intimidated by the power of bigger sleds and still want to keep up to the rest of the group but wants to ride a smaller snowmobile. The reason we ride snowmobiles is because it's fun, it takes us into the 
furthest recesses of nature and God's creation. It's a great sport, it's a great activity. And here's the deal, the Neo is such a capable all-round snowmobile. You can experience all of those snowmobile things that we all love and have come to know over the years just as well on the 55 horsepower Neo as you can on a bigger snowmobile. It's just a little bit less volume. The Neo has given me a lot more confidence um, and I can't wait to ride more this winter with my dad on the trails. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Arctic Cat Snowmobiles. The regions of Quebec by the sea. Discover our ride ideas. FXR Racing. Maximum versatility for all conditions. And by MBRP Performance Exhaust. Built for the victory lap. Yep, it's another Sidewinder review. You know, in case you didn't get our thoughts on the 2019 LTX, or you missed Mark's review of the LTX LE last year, or missed his thoughts on the LTX SE from earlier this season. We get it, not a ton has changed on this sled, so really, what can we report on except to comment on how smooth and powerful the turbocharged 998cc four-stroke triple is without getting you all wound up and asking us why aren't we talking about a similarly equipped Renegade Turbo R? Reality is, we're not here to try to convince you ski fanboys to jump ship and buy a Sidewinder. We respect your loyalty, but remember, the Yamaha riders are loyal too. So for them, let's take a look at the key differences between this sled and an in-season LTX SE that might entice someone to lay down their spring order deposit on an LE. First off, the LE features an RCA outlet, a two-setting heated seat, lightweight disc brakes, a standard 20-inch storage bag, and inside the skid delivering 13 and a half inches of travel, there's a Fox 1.50 QS3 center shock and a Fox 2.0 QS3 rear shock. Up front features Fox 1.50 QS3 shocks boasting a ton of adjustability and 10 inches of travel from the ARCS double wishbone suspension. These Fox QS3s make a truly remarkable improvement in ride quality and will accommodate a wide range of rider preferences with a simple click. This sled is loaded with a ton of comfort features like four QS3 shocks that can be set to your riding style and adjusted easily as terrain dictates. And although electronic power steering isn't new to Yamaha snowmobiles, its addition does make the sleds it's included on stand out within Yamaha's fleet. Ask anyone who's experienced a sled equipped with EPS and they'll tell you how it reduces upper torso strain and shoulder fatigue and lightens up the feel of the front end, which is especially welcome when you're piling on big miles on a multi-day adventure. The most frequent comment we hear from snowmobilers is how the addition of EPS completely lightens up the front end of the snowmobile, more so than the Strike Ski did when it was introduced with the 2021 model lineup. For myself, I found it did take a few miles to adjust to the sensation of having steering assist, but once I got into my ride, I felt an improvement in handling on tighter, twistier trails and a notable reduction in aches and pains the next day. I still feel that the Strike Ski makes a large enough difference in the way the Sidewinder handles that EPS wouldn't make or break my decision to buy an LE over an SE. The Strike Ski eliminates understeer present on past models. Handlebar effort is light and there's nearly no trace of darting creating a noticeable improvement in front end handling. So does the LTX LE actually need EPS? I think you're going to find varying opinions if you asked a bunch of Sidewinder owners. Our research has taught us Yamaha owners love it and this sled was made for big mile riders and is perfect for multi-day trips where all day comfort plays a particularly important role. The 998 Genesis intercooled and turbocharged triple under the hood of the Sidewinder needs no introduction. As of right now, most competitive brand riders are familiar with the snow flap of the Sidewinder because this sled is a rocket ship. From a ride quality perspective, this chassis is the only platform in the business not using an extra long front torque arm. From what we know about this magic feature, we think it's probably time for Yamaha to enlist its powers in combination with its innovative and effective sliding front torque arm design. So is the 998 Turbo 180 horsepower or 200 horsepower? We hesitate to say exactly how much this mill puts out, but regardless, this thing hauls the mail faster than just about any other hypersled. So 200 horsepower? We think so. Yamaha seems to focus on refining rather than redefining its sleds. 
and with the introduction of the catalyst, this has never been more obvious. In the absence of a complete overhaul though, we'd like to see Yamaha upgrade to a firmer flat top seat. And although this tried and true gauge works very well, a larger, more colorful display is long overdue. We think a few small updates like these would help satisfy Yamaha buyers and add value to their order. With the seemingly ever increasing price tag attached to sleds these days, Yamaha finds itself in a precarious situation when it comes to the pricing of the 2023 Sidewinder LTX LE EPS. Sidewinder buyers are paying a premium over a similarly equipped Turbo R Renegade XRS, which might be why we don't see many Turbo Skidoo owners jumping brands. However, diehard Yamaha riders recognize the value presented in a sled of this caliber, particularly at resale. Throw in the brand's solid reputation for reliability, and you've uncovered some fairly solid rationale for the diehard Sidewinder shopper.